You're listening to Rookie Pirate Radio, the official anime and manga podcast for InBetweenDrafts.com. I'm John Negroni. I'm Travis Hymas. And today we're doing a manga recap of One Piece chapter 1093, titled Luffy vs. Kizaru. And Travis, if anything, this chapter is really the fans versus power scaling, at least if you ask me. It's a very good way of putting it, yeah. As usual, we're going to be discussing spoilers for the One Piece manga up until this chapter. So if you have not yet read chapter 1093, be sure to do so now for free on the Viz website or the Shonen Jump app. It's linked in the show notes as always. And remember, all new One Piece chapters are available to read for free up to three weeks after their official release or whenever you want if you subscribe to Shonen Jump, which we definitely recommend and we do. All right. Oh, you know, I was going to say we hadn't brought this up, but the first like hundred so chapters are also free right now. I did forget to bring that up. Well, I thought that was a little bit irrelevant for manga. A little bit irrelevant, but but manga (laughs) readers, if you want to sell your live action friends on reading it, now is the time. Very true. I'm I'm doing everything I can, Travis. It's a part time job, you know, evangelizing one piece. You know, it's uh, it's the religion of the moment in a lot of ways. Um, the live action uh, renewed for season two. I forget if we mentioned that at all last week. Uh, I think it kind of happened hot in the wire for us, but very excited about that. It's coming back. Um, and, and and I know Travis. Like people love talking about One Piece with us, especially the live action, but also spoilers. You know, I got to be honest. Sometimes I wish there was like a destination for us to talk about all of these things in one place, or even better. And this is a little bit of a wild pitch. If people could like reach out to us like anonymously if they wanted and just ask us questions, but I know the technology uh, isn't there yet. You, 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 would you, some sort of some sort of letter. But instead of having to, like, send yeah. it through a news coup, what you're saying is maybe over the well, Internet, mail. like mail. Oh, like I mail. Yeah. Like, like, yeah. Like, like internet or, mail. Or, or Internet mail, um, you know, some sort of digital mail. Um, you know, I'm, ca- I'm Googling it right now, and it looks like there is something called uh, an email address. You and lost you're me never Googling, but I'll not yeah. along, sure. <laughs> <laughs> but, but believe it or not, we actually have one of those, it turns out that I've only just discovered right now, and that is RookiePirateRadio at gmail.com. Wait, what? I Those words all together, I have to hear it again. I'm in disbelief. Well, you see, John, an email address is like your home address, but on the internet, and ours is RookiePirateRadio at gmail.com. Did you say RookiePirateRadio at gmail.com? That's it. You got to say it one more time after that. Rookie Pirate Radio at <laughs> gmail.com. That sounds nice. And I, I'll look into this and do my own research, you know me. But I don't know, Travis. I guess part of me still likes the idea of being social on media. But, I mean, it's not like there's any good social media anymore. What am I going to do? Go on Facebook? No, thanks. I can't find One Piece fans there. You can't find anything on Facebook anymore. But you know what you can uh, do where you can find One Piece fans? Snapchat? Is, uh, uh, ooh, close, but it's just a little too risque for this show. Uh, instead, uh, I might recommend the In Between Drafts Discord server. A Discord server, by the way, is a place where you can go to be social with people on the internet. I know you've never heard of that before, uh, but I, we have I one. haven't, but this bit has gone on long enough, it's so gone I think we should cut enough. to the chase. <laughs> uh, the Discord sh- server is in our uh, show notes. Uh, you can join it. We have channels both for spoiler talk and for non-spoiler talk, so if you are for some reason listening to this and haven't uh caught up on the manga which i highly recommend you do before listening to this uh you can do that come chat with us you can invite your friends if you are caught up um and it's kind of a safe space for them to talk about it too but we talk about other manga anime as well um one of our uh one of our regulars actually just posted the full anime schedule so now we have a list for our section to for expectations externally as well which is always fun uh we also cover movie TV, music, and more. The writer strike looks like it might be ending soon. So, John, there may be movies to talk about here in six to eight months. Uh, <laughs> you, you name it, we're, we're talking about it on there. Uh, we just revived the Coffee Talk channel this week, um, so you could show off your uh, your your morning brews and the mugs that contain them. It's a lot of fun. Uh, please come hang out with us. I haven't been brave enough yet. I feel like I, you guys are going to judge my coffee method. It's kind of insane. Like, it's genuinely unhinged. Domestic girlfriend levels of, like, who is John Negroni? So, 
Now I have to, right? Because I teased it. You know, it's it's very funny because uh, it, it, this this became clear when I went out and we did some in between drafts coverage for PAX um, PAX East this year. Uh, Evan just straight up asked me, he's like, "What coffee do you drink?" And I go, "My friend in Utah, we don't drink coffee." And I just sent him a picture of like the average Monster Energy drink. <laughs> I thought you were <laughs> like, going to say you sent him a picture of like the Mormon Bible or something. The Mormon Bible. <laughs> well, it, it really is like it's, it's a cultural thing. Like you you will see people smack significantly harder amounts of caffeine than just drink coffee uh but it's absolutely true uh that's uh that, that's that's what happens uh all the time so I, you can't be possibly more of a freak than i am i i don't know about that but we'll we'll see we'll test that theory soon enough speaking of theories i know you're a big fan of all kinds of them including one piece theories and uh this is definitely one of those chapters that it's not like a theory chapter like it's, there's not a lot of like revelatory stuff this is a all right Let's enjoy some of the stuff that's been set up and then do a little bit more setup for what happens next. So I don't feel like we're going to cover a ton of like material here, just kind of revel in what's going on, catch up on things. And this feels like one of those ones where we'll probably do like a, a sizable anime check in. I have a few things I want to bring up, so stay tuned for yeah, that. I do, we'll I do think I'm taking an L, but we should get into the main beats before we do that. We should, but I, but I do have one last thing to tease, uh, not to delay it any further, but... We did get a listener request. Um, somebody who's not on the Discord. So for all Travis knows, I could be making this up. I'll have to send him screenshots to verify. <laughs> but uh, somebody who does follow us um, on Instagram, uh, somebody who uh, has just, you know, got into One Piece super recently and just started listening to Rookie Pirate Radio. Shout out to Sean. Sean is somebody who I know in real life. And, uh, you know, I would never have expected this person to be into One Piece. He's like one of those people where you, you know, you meet him and you find out that he's a weeb, sort of like adopted. Um, and I, I love that so much. But uh, he had one thing because he listened to one episode and he was like, would you guys ever do a video podcast at some point? Like a special thing, you know, not like a weekly thing. Uh, we have too much going on. But Travis, uh, we've been called out on doing a video thing. And he said mainly because we were clowning a little bit on YouTubers, uh, gently and politely and self-deprecatingly, but he did make a good point. And so I wanted to put it out there for the listeners and uh, the discord folks, if they ever want to see our, uh, us do this, like as a special thing, you know, it would probably have to be an event, but let us know if you're interested in that sort of thing. Or if you prefer the mystique, I will admit Travis, there have been times when I've watched a video podcast after listening to it for so long. No, thanks. Didn't like it. I felt unsettled. But other people seem to like that thing, and maybe I'm the unicorn. What do you think? I mean, I completely vibe with you. Sometimes you just don't need to. I mean, we're, we're not streaming this on Twitch right now for a reason. It allows us to edit out all the mistakes. But uh, We really know, don't edit. That. <laughs> Look, I'm the one who edits these episodes. I am very, very, like, freewheeling with it. The only times I leave anything in or I, sorry that I take anything out is like audio quirky stuff. Or if like we're stumbling over each other, like, you know, endlessly, but for the most part, these are pretty significantly uncut, including the L's. You can be rest assured. I mean, yeah, we got to stay honest, of course, but uh, I'll leave it. I'll leave it up to the listeners. They can, they can let us know. Uh, we can add that to the in between drafts agenda. If, if yes. needed. Thank you for pushing that uh, that reference in real quick. All right, Main Beats, Chapter 1093, Luffy versus Kizaru. First of all, love that the title is that uh, really establishes that, like, okay, this is going to be a fight. We're not just going to have, like, a, you know, quick little baby skirmish. Um, okay, so the cover is a reader request. You all know the drill. Uh, another reader request. Not sure how long those are going to keep going, but we'll just keep going along with it uh so this is showing two uh tarsiers it says tarsier brother so i don't i literally had never heard of a tarsier before this travis but apparently they're like a type of monkey uh, and i looked at the pictures like i've seen this kind of monkey before but i didn't know the name so i learned something thank you oda sensei oda sama for giving us uh, me at least a little bit of uh, animal planet uh to start off this week um okay so we see them stealing kobe and helmepa's eyewear very fun and cute all right, so the real chapter. Uh, okay, the chapter picks up right where the last one left off. We see Luffy now in his giant gear fifth form. He's holding Kizaru in his hand. He starts spinning the animal wildly. We are in full Looney Tunes territory beautifully. And then he hauls Kizaru off in the distance. I mean, literally, like Team Rocket levels of like, I was, if the anime doesn't do like the little star thing, it's like, you know, Kizaru's flying off again. He even does like the thing where he's sort of like, don't get carried away. And I hope they add it's, in that effect. Where it's like, bing, 
How perfect! It's, Come on, it would be perfect. It they would be absolutely amazing. gotta do that. Uh, so seeing this as a prime opportunity, Atlas concocts a plan to go down past the barrier, which they can now finally control as we saw in the last chapter. Uh, so Atlas wants to go down there so that uh, they can take the pacifistas back from Kizaru's authority control, thinking incorrectly that they are the ones the high they are the ones with the highest authority on the island over the pacifistas and the seraphim because they don't know that saturn is there too he's lurking on a ship so uh vegapunk also the real vegapunk also wants to go with atlas to make sure that bonnie is okay and he even scolds frankie a little bit over the transponder snail for letting kizaru attack her uh he's getting all like grandpa uh sleepy sleepy joe punk, vegapunk and uh hearing all this Kiz uh not kizaru uh sanji also volunteers to go down and help Bonnie. Uh, he's with Jimbei, and Jimbei actually reveals that he and Sanji weren't in the the scene like last week, which that was my L. I assumed that Sanji was helping Zoro with Luchi because we didn't see him, but no, he went down with Jimbei in between that time and decided they were gonna they were helping Vegapunk pick up what Jimbei calls so called luggage. So not sure what that is. Uh, let the speculation there begin. We, so we do get a little bit of theory crafting, I guess, but uh, I don't know. I don't know if there's a lot of interesting stuff to build up there. Uh, we cut to Bonnie's perspective in the Fabrio phase. Uh, she's been badly injured from going through the barrier, just like Luffy was. But like, yeah, she's burned all over. And uh, she's been sneaking around, transforming the Marines uh, that are around there, like transforming their ages uh, so that she can avoid detection. A uh, quick flashback reveals that Bonnie was actually saved by Sentumaru. So when she went through the barrier and she was falling, Sentumaru actually caught her. Uh, he's probably down for the count now, like for sure uh, at this point. But he he apparently had like all the little strength he had left to catch her. Uh, that That's uh, one of Travis's uh, L's thinking that Kuma was going to. But you did you did predict that she would be captured, like held by somebody. So you got you were on the right track. I, I give you credit for that one. So just put it out there. Um, we cut over to Zoro and Luchi's fights. Um, so that's back up in the Labo phase. They're still right outside Punk Records. And uh, Luchi is now in his awakened Zoan form. So he's taking Zoro seriously. Uh, Luffy sees their fight going on and asks if Zoro wants his help. But he says, just focus on Kizaru. And Luchi seems fine with that too. He says, because uh, Zoro says that like, you know, our, if this is all you got, then like, you're, you know, you don't, you're not worthy of fighting the captain, right? And he is right. Uh, but then yeah, Luchi is just like, well, fine. It's worth it to me if I get to kill number two of an emperor of the sea. Hold on, Lucci. Excuse me? An emperor of the sea? <laughs> Little baby girl? What did you what did you say 10, 15 chapters ago, Lucci? Oh, I don't see Luffy as an emperor. Is that what you told Stussy? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, next, we flash over to Kizaru, who was thrown all the way to the ocean. But uh, so he's way past like the ships. He's like way it, like Luffy really sent him. Uh, but he like swerves. Obviously, he's made of light. He can do all kinds of crazy stuff. We know that. Um, and he swerves directions. He lets off an attack called Yasakani's Sacred Jewel. It's another one of like the sacred treasures of Japan moves. I think this is like the last one that would round out. Um, I'd have to go through the list, but we've seen yeah, a few yeah. now at this, this point. Is, this is the last one. And uh, yeah, so that bla that's a, it's an interesting one. So Sacred Jewel blasts off this like large number of Kizaru light clones. So he goes Naruto on us. And uh, they all use his sword technique, Amano Murakamo's sword, uh, which is obviously going to be an advantage against Luffy, who's vulnerable to cutting attacks. So Luffy sees all this happening, and he uh, is still kind of seeing them as like the holograms, like when we first landed on Punk Records, right? And he saw like the big hologram, so he's kind of like, you know, associating that with the clones. And he kind of quickly, like on the spot, comes up with a plan to trick the clones into chasing him, lines them up so that he can do Dawn's stamp through all of them at once. Uh, love hearing Don be incorporated into his moves, by the way. And uh, so he manages to get through him, and he thinks he's going to hit the real one, but then he realizes that he was one who was being tricked. Uh, this was just a distraction so Kizaru could go to his real mission and go to Vegapunk. But we see Kizaru is in the control room, and it's fortunate that Vegapunk left uh, because Vegapunk would have been dead uh, if he had stayed. Uh, so we see Kizaru is holding Usopp, being like, oh, I wonder where Vegapunk is. And uh, so, yeah, this is uh, right when we see Vegapunk and Atlas. They're in the Vega Tank 8, and they're picking up Sanji on the way. Their ship kind of looks like a Star Wars ship almost, like the, the wheels and stuff from like the prequels, I want to say. And uh, so they pick up Sanji on the way down. They're racing to go get Bonnie, who Vegapunk 
calls a poor little child. This is the other kind of theory crafting people have been doing of like, all right, are we back to like, is Bonnie really a little kid and all that stuff? I know we touched upon that a little bit last week too. Uh, so then Kizaru spots the Vega Tank 8 and he sets off an attack that Luffy actually blocks with his body. Uh, the light literally enters him like a lamp. And, uh, and I'm not like literally, like not even metaphorically, but like it looks like he's being illuminated. Right as Frankie and Lilith show up to join the Vega tank as well. So they're all heading down there. The Marines that are uh, that are like all around at this point, like and including at the coast, are informed that Vegapunk is on the move. And we see Edison back in the control room. He partly deactivates the Frontier Dome so that the Vega tank can go through the barrier. And that gives Atlas a chance to command the Pacifistas to wipe out all Navy sailors on the island. And then the chapter, which is a little bit shorter, it's only like 15 pages, so it's not one of the longer ones, but it ends with a menacing shot of Saturn, who might be making a big move soon, because again, he can control all of the, you know, he has the highest authority on the island, allegedly. I want to say Travis, though. I'm just putting it out there. I wonder if Vegapunk has another contingency we don't know about, because it does seem a little bit like, wouldn't he have some kind of backup plan I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I mean, I mean, that's as good a place as we're going to start because, uh, you know, I've been pushing this idea that something has to force Saturn into the light. He's not just here to be here. That is just a waste of, of time, given the, the buildup that we've gotten even just recently about the Gorose. So, yeah, this sounds like the thing that's going to drag him out. Uh, and it does sound like a thing that Vegapunk wouldn't expect because... None of us did. Like, once it happened, we all freaked out yeah. for two weeks. So, <laughs> just two weeks. Also, I forgot yeah, to say, right. uh, we do have a break next week. So, we that out there. great time to leave it hanging. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Um, and uh, for our break, uh, there has already been some preliminary chatter of is this going to be the Boruto episode? Because a couple of couple of one piece fans up in this chat have been reading or to two blue vortex so anyway back to one piece um, yeah, anyway <laughs> this is the kind of chapter i like where it's like just seeing luffy in full-on gear fifth mode going toe-to-toe -to -toe with one of the strongest human beings in the one piece world having fun can i just say like between this and the anime gear fifth is such a best case scenario one of the best just shonen power-ups ever like i'm saying it now i've seen enough i'm declaring it ultra instinct don't care super saiyan you're still up you're still top tier we will never forget or let you down this is this is above sage mode this is above all the naruto stuff that we've seen in my opinion um this is above bleach this is just this is on the same tier as super saiyan it's a it's a game changer I mean, just because look at what Oda is able to do with Gear 5th. Fights now are so fun. They're so unpredictable. And they're so in the tone of One Piece. And it's so funny to me that when, like, Gear 5th first happened, people were having little, like, fits. And, like, I remember even then being like, hmm. This is this is great. I think this could have the potential to be one of the best moves, writing moves, Oda's ever done. And here we are. Well, it, it's funny you call it a game changer, because if anything, I would say that it's a, a reorientation. Because back when One Piece started, this was the kind of series where battles didn't really have like this extended, big choreography, you know, long, you know, it, uh, endurance run, I guess is the right yeah. word for like it. Like the Katakuri fight, I think, is where that really started to yeah. like wear people out like myself well, yeah, included yeah well i mean even even going to marineford marineford isn't you know silly in in the way that a lot of, of one piece battles are but you you look pre-time skip you, you know enel the enel face you know the, that fight is basically one the second he realizes he can't just electrocute luffy um infamously the defeat of buggy is literally luffy just kicking him in the groin like that's <laughs> just how he wins like the the Ultimately, the goal is always to tell the joke whenever possible. Everything else is secondary, even the emotional moments. The only reason they work so well is because One Piece prioritizes getting the joke across. So resetting Luffy back to this mode where he doesn't just look silly, because we kind of got over Bounce Man, for example. Bounce Man looked really stupid, <laughs> like stupid fun in like the opening, because like you look at him and you're just like, what is happening right now um 
but people kind of got over it really quickly because it was a cool fight and in the the dressrosa climax is still something you know, it was like satisfying it was satisfying. it was satisfying see him land, land that punch yeah right i think that people, but it just if anything doesn't... the thing the thing i think that wore people out about it or like annoyed people was the whole 10 minute hockey recharge and I'm kind of glad that Gear 5th has gotten away from that kind of thing because it just felt like, okay, as soon as Gear 4th is activated, the it starts becoming a ticking clock, which I'm sure Gear 5th is the same way, but it's just so fun. And Luffy's not being so serious about it that, like, I'm okay with that because it, it, we haven't had to do a whole, like, he loses the form. Now he has to run around and, you know, and, and well, not die I, for 10 I minutes. I mean, that was that was introducing the humor back in, right? Like, that's where we had to find it. Hopefully we don't have to do that again, you know, because gear the Devil Fruit's kind of doing a lot more of the heavy lifting this time exactly. in this form. Yeah. Um, so hopefully we don't have to do any recharges. Hopefully there's, you know, some sort of way. But all, Luffy also recharged earlier, so maybe we just don't have to deal with that. That would be fine, too. Uh, but you're absolutely right. It is so much more fun to see him goofing around and, like, laughing and being like, Hey, hey, Zoro, you, you want me to you just go flick him off the island for you? Because I could go do that, too. I mean, I mean, he could. He could pick up Rob Lucci and do the exact same thing, and it would be over. Right. Like, sure, Lucci can walk on air, but that's not going to be good enough at, at that velocity. Um, so, you know, the, it, it's it's a lot of fun. Um, people people have already been reading too hard into this, too. Like when Kizaru gets that that gets the jump on Luffy and he gets into the control room and everything. And they're like, well, what about observation hockey? What about it's supposed to be funny? It's a joke. <laughs> Laugh at it. It's he's supposed to go. Oh, I oh no i was tricked because i thought i tricked him it's a joke let it's okay to laugh it's okay to have fun that's what differentiates this so much from those other shonen series um and i think it's what makes luffy so endearing well and also i i thought of the observation hockey but i mean we're dealing with an admiral with really powerful hockey i i don't think that he's so easy to like see through quite honestly uh, um we're sure. talking about it because he's literally made of light so, like, for Luffy, how, what are you observing? Because you're, he's a Logia user. Like, it, it's, pr like, and we're talking about countless clones. Right. So, yeah, I think it's a little bit of a tall order to be like, oh, yeah, Luffy has this perfect radar or something. Like, no, he doesn't. Not against right. an ad. Yeah, it's not, a lot of people, you know, and this is, this is a general complaint, right? About, like, oh, well, what are you going to do? What, you know, why didn't this work? Why, you know, we have perfect knowledge, right? We're always going in with like, oh, well, you could have done this. You could have done that. What is the character going to do? That's, yeah. that's the question. What is, well, what people would still Luffy look do? at it. I swear, I, look, I keep bringing up Dragon Ball Z, but like, if there's one bad thing that Akira Toriyama did unintentionally, it's like turn people into like scouters. And it's like, well, we, 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 hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Luffy's power level is 112,000. But but Kizaru's is 111,000 game set match. And I'm like, no, no. There you know, are no power levels in One Piece. It's very funny you put it that way, because that's when Dragon Ball stopped being a, ga a gag manga, too. That's true. I mean, it, it, it really stopped toward the tail end of Dragon Ball, to be fair. It, it still had gag tendencies. But yeah, I mean, once we get into the Saiyan saga and it just becomes like we have insurmountable, insurmountable foe, you know, it, now we got to defeat insurmountable foe. Uh, it's fine because like that stuff is satisfying. It's, you know, in its own way. Yeah, this but, is just different and, it, and it's a yeah. bit different. Yeah, I think sometimes like people look at like the crocodile fight, for example, and they think the thing they like about it is like Luffy fights him, but then he loses. Then Luffy comes up with like one advantage, but he still loses. But then he comes up with a really clever advantage and then he wins. It's like, yeah, that part's cool. That's storytelling one on one. But no, it's it's because Crocodile's a really good villain and watching him lose is the satisfying part because of everything else around it. And also just like the sheer like insanity of that entire arc and what the characters go through is just it's a journey. That's what people really like about this stuff. That's why like why uh and I'm ranting about other anime at this point, but like in Bleach like Bleach lost the plot because it just learned all the wrong lessons and we have to go to like the Mundo world. And it's just like, it, 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 we just get obsessed with tournament arcs. That's what it is, isn't it? And so I'm just happy uh, that like, Rodan uh, never does that, right? I, we don't have enough time for me to get into Bleach right now. <laughs> but, uh, but, I, but I will say like, y you know, the, Luffy loves putting stuff in his mouth. You know what I mean? So many fights, including right here in this chapter, he experiments with, can I eat this thing? 
<laughs> so often. He took a bite That's why out the of cracker crocodile. fight is one of my favorites. Yeah, like, it actually works with the cracker fight, right? Uh, so he well. Puts the, uh, he puts the uh, Arlong's teeth in his mouth. He's like, look, I'm, I'm a shark guy now, too. You know, I was uh, waiting for him to, to <laughs> do that to Katakuri, but, you know. Right? And uh, so, so, like, of course, he, like mochi, yeah. <laughs> of course he just eats Kizaru's laser. He's probably been thinking about whether or not he could eat that for years. <laughs> literally years. Um, I hope. I hope in the anime they turn him into, like, a disco ball. Because that, that would be, be the perfect funny. gag. Instead yeah. of it just being, like, bright light, be like, he's all colorful. That would be just so good uh just do it just like you have in the in the new op that's that's it do it exactly like that anime team um we got we yeah, got a yeah, frankie great. vegapunk moment which you were heartened for i was happy on your behalf for that yeah it's great uh it's very funny that he's scolding frankie um kind of like uh how you know almost like a master apprentice thing like uh you know just like you're you know you're supposed to be responsible and he kind of feels bad about that um so now he's tagging along which means sanji and frankie might be the first two people to get to see an elder of the straw hats which is very funny to me because neither of these boys are going to care whatsoever <laughs> yeah true. Like, they're gonna be like who's this guy Although, what's I wonder this about because frankie is pretty world experienced i wonder if he would kind of have an idea of like oh i know i like he and robin would be the ones i would expect to know who the gorosei are or have robin 100 percent. robin 100 yeah. percent. the rest of them do not care they do not care they've never oh, and i don't think yeah i don't think they would care upon knowing that but like frankie would probably brush it off right and be like oh yeah, yeah. he's one of the elders leader of the celestial dragons I d- anyway i do uh <laughs> i do wonder though since he's you know he's tagging along with a couple of vega punks we have this good opportunity and he kind of has a chip on his shoulder now because he kind of got scolded by his hero i do wonder if he's going to do something stupid and or heroic uh while he's, down there yeah because he's been failing like Minor failures, but like Frankie is being set up for a big moment here. I've seen plenty of people in the community say like they, they're heartened by this because like this is like a nice little potential setup that Oda is putting in of like Frankie's going to get his moment because he's being, you know, he's being tested and he's being pushed. So you have to have a payoff to that, right? And yeah. so Frankie kind of coming through would be really cool. Also, people have been speculating more and more about like, could this be? You know, the arc that kind of gives us an idea of like why his wanted poster is the sunny. And if something's going to happen to kind of pay that off, too, I'm I'm kind of trying to keep a close eye on that. Uh, That's a. I mean, it's got to be something, right? What regardless of anything, he's not with the sunny and he's not with the general Frankie, which is the first time that's happened since Dress Rosa. So whatever happens, Frankie is throwing hands, (laughs) which is great. That's like probably like, literally too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for the first time in a really long time, um, you know, I, I love his fight with senior pink, but he does not get nearly as many brawls as some of the other characters. So I'm kind of, uh, um, really we haven't seen him really push to the limit, um, in a way that we've seen other characters and their one V ones, you right. know, we've seen him just kind of like be really capable. And I like that. Cause I think he's, he's big bro. Like I like that. He is just, He's kind of like one of the secret weapons of the straw hats. He's not one of the ones that you, people think of really quickly as like, because he's the tank. He's literally the tank and he comes through, but he's never sort of like, he's not Zoro Sanji level. He's obviously, he's not Chopper, you know, Brook level or, and he's kind of like in this weird tier with Robin where we know that they're really powerful, but like they kind of handle the like the secondary high tier fodder and do it well. Even though we know that if like they went up against the bigger big hitters, they would have a much harder time, but that's okay. If that makes sense. Yeah. They're they're, they're, uh, they're a second string. Yeah. They, they, there you go. Like they, they, they're like the starting lineup, (laughs) Sanji, Zoro, Jim Bay, uh, Frankie and Robin, they're just really clutch. They come in and they're like, they need to do a couple three pointers and they're going to, they're going to make it work. Um, because uh, yeah, don't forget they each took down a member of the Toby Ropo, but you can sort of see that like, for Robin, like she was really pushed her, li- her limit for that. So you can easily make the case that like Frankie is just a little bit more. He has more of a constitution stamina to him because he was able to defeat uh, what was his name? Sakasuki, Sasaki, um, the rhinoceros guy. He was able to beat him like pretty handily. Like even the anime is kind of showing like when the beast pirates go up against uh, are trying to still like make Kaido a thing. Um, he's sort of like, I-, I can I can beat you guys up. I still have plenty of energy left. You know what I mean? So. Worth pointing out right. that Frankie yeah. is, is a tank. 
And it's not necessarily that everybody needs to have a one on one. I think Wano really did a decent job of giving most people something to shine in. Um, yes. We'll talk about a few characters up at the control room here in a second. But yeah, I think out. it would be I think <laughs> if you're going to give I think if you're going to give Frankie something really cool to do, this has got to be the place to do it. I like those Frankie stocks. They got to pay off right here. This, this is his dream. Literally, like this is a dream for him. In every sense of the word. And I don't think he's had a chance. And that's because the story's been very fast paced and a lot has happened. I don't really, you know, I'm not saying like this is like a bad move on Oda's part, but I would love to see this turn into something before we leave. It should be noted, you know, that we're in this weird place where there are only like two. Well, I guess we should say there there are three kind of like really well-known villains, and then there are all the vice admirals. So we have, and we didn't see the vice admirals here, and I wonder if that's where they're going to kind of come into things. Because if the pacifist's turn on the Navy, then the vice admirals really have to get in there. If they turn on the straw hats, who knows? But yeah, Frankie and Sanji are going to be pretty critical either way. Like they're going to have to clean up some vice admirals here. And the vice admirals have always ranged in their skill level. Some of them are monsters, like, you know, not Garp level, but definitely tough. Whereas some are a little bit more like, all right, you know, I think that Chopper could handle a vice admiral here or there. You know what I mean? It's hard to say, but uh, I do think that, yeah, this is going to be just a total battle royale in all the the satisfying ways and i'm just kind of curious like if if it's going to be one of those things where like if saturn waits to do to try to turn the tide or do you think it's going to happen like in the next chapter or two like mike i'm curious like what the timing is going to be because we still have the iron giant that's like yeah eyes glowing eyes and are glowing we know that he doesn't really care about casualties that was specifically called out recently in a previous chapter so you know, the pacifists to start blowing up some Navy guys, he's probably not going to care too much about that. He's probably still going to be like, hey, Kizaru, can we wrap this up here, please? Um, but I mean, yeah, I wonder if he doesn't emerge until Kizaru at, like maybe has to like power up himself to fight Luffy. And that's when he realizes this is serious and then he has to step in because it gets to the point where he sees that Kizaru just to take on Luffy has to like maybe awaken his Logia that could be a sign that like, all right, I, I can't leave this to chance. Do, like, do you think, uh, do you think Saturn can see gear fifth Luffy from that far away? I would probably say no. Cause I like, think like they know spec. he's awakened it at this point, but I'd be curious to see like, like he seems very stoic and serious here, but you know, it's the Jojo menacing panel, right? So that doesn't really tell us much. I, I would love to see this man's yeah. actual reaction to seeing Nika in action again. And we don't know too, right? Like, you know, if, I guess like if Luffy goes like his giant form and it's more toward the like kind of the base of the island then probably. Yeah. But we got to Yeah. I mean, it's a big island. I, I don't think he's he can see him like anywhere near the Labo phase for sure. So who In, knows? Who who knows? Control um, room. Control room. Usopp. Poor Usopp. Poor. Um, what are you thinking? Uh, well, I'm thinking, again, a lot of slander, <laughs> a lot of slanders happening. Um, you know, we were just talking about, like, the crew and their usefulness and everything. Um, you know what I see? I see in this panel an admiral just entered the room and every single straw hat in that panel had a weapon drawn. Yeah. Whatever yeah, we else. See you, Nami. You know, yeah, yeah. Nami's got the climb attacked out. Brooke, who should never be discounted for anything. He's been an mm-hmm. MVP in multiple arcs in very unique ways. And yeah, you know, of course, Usopp isn't going to be able to do crap to Kizaru. That's not his job. But he's got the slingshot out. He tried. He's like, yeah. I'm not going to run. Uh, so that, I mean, good. what else were they supposed to do? <laughs> I, I know. I don't even know what else. Yeah. To, I mean, if anything, Luffy kind of did screw up because like, of the four people you don't want to leave in a room with Kizaru, um, you know, the the three, you know, three vulnerable people like Chomper and, and, and Usopp and Nami uh, and Robin. I mean, they're here to kill a guy for researching the Void Sentry. Probably not leave Robin alone with this guy, you know? That, I mean, that's just a... It's technically a bonus kill, but like... There's a vested interest still in Nico Robin not continuing to breathe. It is interesting, right? That Robin's not really brought up, you know, and and the list of things to take care of. And I would have to assume the reason being that 
Kazaro's got too much else on his plate. And so it's just not a priority, which is right. uh, kind of fascinating in its own right, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's, uh, you know, he's trying to wrap it up fast, which he was already trying to do. It's his whole deal, right? Um, speed and everything really, you know, get back to getting taking his naps and whatnot. But yeah, I, I can't. It's hard to tell. Be like, I don't think he expected Luffy to just like do that to him. I thought he I think he really thought that like he could clench this easy and it's not looking that way. So he's got to play the mind games now. Right. Makes me wonder, you know, if there's one thing that would probably make Saturn be like, OK, it would be if the Seraphim were let loose. Who could let loose the Seraphim, though? That's the question. They were, they were down in the in their little bubbles. So who Edison? could do it? Edison? Well, Edison's back in the control room. So you know who could do it? I don't know if they could control it remotely, but where is not, York? <laughs> where is where is Caribou? Oh boy, it's time! It's time for the Caribou X Machina. Caribou wants to help out. Um, <laughs> where no, is know. you know? That's actually a very valid question at this point. Like all hell is broken loose. Where is Caribou? It's it is odd that he hasn't shown up yet. I know we had our fun of like. You know, all the theories and stuff about him being involved with the, the traitor and all that stuff. But do we still have like the sort of sitting framing device of the, the oh, what was it? Like the laboratory, the room that we can't go to, the mother frame, like all mother flame. All this stuff kind of like has been built it up, built up to a certain point. That's why I was sort of like, oh, they're going to destroy it to do the barriers. Like, OK, they're not going to do that. <laughs> but uh, unless they still did that to like get rid of the barrier like if somebody else did that um like a third party uh, i know you want to maybe bring in katarina devon at some point i don't know i mean uh, i have did, an l to take we'll get there but uh, we did yeah well we did me too but we did speculate right that the um at one point that caribou could be working with the blackbeard pirates and so that could come to a head at some point i mean there's just so many loose threads still and i'll be honest we could go it could go in so many directions but like I don't even care about that. Like when I was reading this, I wasn't thinking that much about like what's going to happen with this and this and this. I was just like, I want to see more Luffy versus Kizaru fight because it's really good. <laughs> it's been a really fun fight to follow. And it's, it's still going like it's still early. Yeah, I think at this point we could say definitively with just the chapter title that this is it's a full brawl. We're doing this. There's no uh, hit and runs. And I still I still maintain, you know, my prediction from from last time. That it's going to, Luffy's not going to win just by beating the guy up in a basic way. I think he's going to break this dude. <laughs> like, I, I think he's, he seems unflappable, but I think Luffy's getting to him. And so I want to believe that. And I think something is going to finally make the guy snap. And Work, yeah. working theory, um, his eyes haven't bulged out of his head or anything yet because he's trying to maintain his cool. Mm -hmm. uh, and the glasses are going to be the tell on that. Like he's gonna lose his his sunglasses, and that's gonna be the 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 kind of like oh crap moment. Yeah, I mean that would kind of set it off, wouldn't it? Uh, all right. Well, I don't have too much to else to add. Let's see, Bonnie being called a little child. Some people looked at that <sighs> and were like, about, okay, it's Vega Punk. Yeah. Have we talked about? Have we really really sat down and talked about the the Bonnie? We talked about it a bit. I mean, I think we've we've mentioned, I think at one point, the SBS, where Oda was just like, oh, she's really like in her 20s or whatever. And it's one of those things where, like, first of all, Oda could change his mind. Or it could be that Bonnie lies about how old she is. I think we've seen instances where, you know, she literally was being drowned, right, in, like, the beginning of this arc. And if her devil fruit is being impacted by seawater, sea prism stone, whatever it is, wouldn't she kind of revert to her true form? And that's something that I think, like, it's it's fuzzy in terms of how devil fruits like that work, because sometimes they don't work that directly. Uh, I think that there is an issue with, like, how old she is versus what's been going on with Kuma. Like, she's a little kid. Kuma's kind of older, isn't he? Isn't he kind of like Dragon's Age? So, like, yeah, he was at God Valley. He was, like, a kid at God Valley. He's old. That means he's older than Shanks. So, like, yeah, it, it seems weird to me that, like, Shanks... For example, like a character that old, like in the, their late 40s, early 50s, or whatever it is, would have a kid like that's like eight uh, or and, nine. Yeah. And and her relative age, the the one that the SBS, you know, approximates her at is still older than Luffy, too. And to be fair, too, though, uh, we should say, say that like Gold Roger was a little bit older when he had Ace. Right. So it's not 
necessarily out of the question for this series for people to have kids like at an older age. So I, that's we should be fair about that at least. Yeah, yeah. Uh, mo- mostly the the thing that with Bonnie this week that I do want to highlight is not Vegapunk talking about her, but rather that she's using her devil fruit powers. <laughs> Yeah, which is I'm, um, I'm sorry, pretty Giannis. pretty damning. <laughs> That's <laughs> I don't I think Katarina Va- 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 I don't have an out for that one. I gotta be honest. That one, I was like, "That's a those are devil fruit powers." Do you have a number two suspect for who who Katarina Va- could be? So this is my this is my really weird one. Where's Edison? Robin? <laughs> uh, Robin's still recovering, right? Because because right. Robin in, has all the in injuries. the control room. It's it's there's been a lot less Robin in these panels over the past few chapters. Oh, you think like maybe like Katarina Von stepped in like during one of the fights that was, that we haven't really seen yet. Right. Cause we saw Rob and post the fight. That's not a bad, uh, that's a I good think, observation. Think, I'm just trying to think of characters. We haven't seen do stuff that would be very difficult to imitate. Ooh, um, what if the black is, pirates secretly captured Robin? Th- I mean, that would be a backup plan, right? That cause they don't Cause know they would have her and pudding. Yeah. Between the two of them, that's basically the world. But Robin would be a valid target. If Caribou is, in fact, a spy for the Blackbeard Pirates, for example, this would explain their presence on Egghead. They're not here for Egghead. They're here for the Straw Hats. The only problem with that, though, is... Well, I, I still think that they're they're coming after Vegapunk. But the only problem with that is then you have like a search and rescue mission for Robin. We've been there. We've been there, which is it's, why it's not my favorite. I mean, there are other options for this, right? It, you know, as you've pointed out, the Frontier Dome is not a fun experience to pass through. So are they even in the room? Are they somewhere else on the island? Could they be impersonating a vice admiral? That's also an option. I mean, the the world is the oyster. Maybe I'm still overthinking all of this, but eventually the chaos of there being Blackbeard pirates has to also come into play here. Yeah, and and you know, if, if I had to pick at this point, I'm like Robin is now the least um, depicted character. The only other thing that I would point out is at this point, um, Lilith is on her own on the island piloting the Journal of Frankie. Um, and Jimbei is now on his own as well. Yes. So if anybody's going to encounter anything weird, those two seem like potential candidates, not necessarily to be replaced or captured or anything, but they may be the ones to discover something else is going on here. Um, Jimbei could even unleash the Seraphim technically. Yeah. I mean, well, so what we know for now is that Jimbei says, uh, when he says that they picked up the so-called luggage, which fun uh looks like he's he has like some boxes and things like that probably stuff that's going to be paid off later i don't think it's going to be immediately relevant but um i think it's an, a feather in the cap of the people who think that vegapunk makes it out uh that said he says that we're gonna like let's all meet up there referring to the rear exit so i think the next thing we could see is that like all of the people who are not with either the vega tank or you know zoro's fight over yonder uh with luchi and then obviously luffy I think so, like, Usopp, Nami, Chopper Robin, that whole crew are going to, like, basically meet up at the rear exit where the Sunny is. And so that could mean that they're all kind of out of commission, right? Like, they're all sort of just, like, ready to to leave, Where it, whereas we have uh, Sanji and uh, Frankie with Luffy and Zoro. So we kind of have, like, an interesting formation. Um, we don't have the core four. Uh, we have sort of the, the three monsters— uh, the monster trio and Frank, a robot. Yeah. And I mean that, uh, and seeing those dynamics get played with a little bit is good because it was, you know, you could easily do the whole monster quartet thing. And like, you know, Jim Bay just also throws hands every time. <laughs> uh, but, but I like this idea because Jim Bay is very much the dad now. Uh, of the, of he's the trying crew. to get. He's trying to pack the kids into the car. Yeah, <laughs> it's like literally. He's even wearing a shirt for like. <laughs> yeah, you could want to go to Elbaf Disney World or what? <laughs> yeah, like for real. And, uh, and I'll turn this thousand sunny around. I'm humming. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> like, like literally, he's he's the dad now. So, uh, by by all means, it kind of makes sense that he'd be the one kind of sitting there um, with the setting rest of the, the car with, seat. With, with, yeah, setting up the car seat, getting them all ready to go. You know, you For know Bonnie, how it is. Right? Um, so yeah, I could I could totally understand see, uh, seeing that. And if there is any kind of complication, having Jim Bay towards the back to handle that um, later as a, as a different complication. Um, could definitely be something. I do wonder if they're going to immediately escape because the idea that Kizaru can just warp to places and potentially put other crew members at risk or put Vegapunks at risk or just get York, for example, uh, get her and go. Um, thing I haven't thought about, for example, is what are they going to do with York if they get away? Do they leave York? Is that the plan? Mm, I would. Does Vegapunk have a way of turning the satellites thirsty. off? I think you should. I think they should kill her. <laughs> Well, like, yeah, yeah. I, she's she's a satellite, right? Can Vegapunk turn her off if she's disconnected from punk records? Yeah, Side note, turn, how did he let that turn happen? her off and plug her back in? I don't know. Yeah, like, right. Like reset her, you know, maybe that's what we do. Like wipe her memories like we do Star yeah. Wars droid it up. I don't know. Yeah, but for um, but one of Kizaru's goals is to get York away. So that's a thing he could do. I think making I, Luffy have to consider those variables in the fight is something to complicate it. So I don't know if I want them running away yet. I kind of I kind of wonder if york is our monet just in the sense where like i think oda has realized over the course of like constructing that character like she kind of sucks and so i think he's just like slowly writing her off <laughs> like not that he would kill her necessarily but he probably will if, yeah, yeah we don't we don't need her talking every week right yeah i think it's one of those things where you kind of realize like yeah this character's not that great i'll just sort of like labo phase her out i don't know um here's my question what do you think is likelier that bonnie joins the straw hats or Bonnie joins the Straw Hat Grand Fleet. I kind of am <laughs> at this point married to the idea that we're done when it comes to adding new members. Because, and, and I mean, thanks to the live action also not making this clear, uh, well done on that script writers. Uh, I still don't know if Luffy's count includes himself or not when he talks about 10 men. Yeah. Um, I was really hoping the live action would clarify that and it just refused to. Uh, of course so, it, yeah. so congratulations. <laughs> well done. And that's not to say that like he wouldn't necessarily add people. This man's tried to add zombie trees to his crew uh, just willy nilly. So I don't think that even he's necessarily married to that. But I do like the idea that Jimbei, given just how long it took him to be able to join, is kind of the last one. And now we're in the final saga and we could just start doing that. Even though I was really rooting for Yamato. Yeah. I think I've I think I've come along I think I've come around to the idea of being like, no, this is good. This is this is where we we want things to be because now we've really brought all these characters' stories full circle. We've dealt with Sanji's extra backstory. Uh Jimbei is here. He's a character who's been set up since the pre time skip age like we're not gonna who else could join at that scale at that point who who else vegapunk who, just kidding a lot of people <laughs> have kicked around like adding vegapunk as like the cruise scientist and that's an interesting idea but again i think frankie can fill that role i think i think frankie turns walter white on that and is like stay out of my territory yeah right like i do think i do think that uh case can be made for the vegapunk pirates with bonnie being the vice captain I, I genuinely you know like having I, if shaka was still around you know i would say that that's even more likely but yeah. um uh, they I have mean, been thinned out a bit the, the only thing the, the thing for bonnie specifically putting putting aside you know my own feelings about it for bonnie joining it would be the same thing with like law joining their captains it ta I mean, they're captains and Should all of the worst. Right, but all of the worst generation have an ego about them. That is... Cavendish is part of the Grand Fleet, and Cavendish's ego is way I, bigger than Bonnie's. Uh, yeah, but but the Grand Fleet, you know, if you wanted to say Bonnie joins the Grand Fleet, that seems more likely than Bonnie joins the Straw Hats. I agree. That's where I was leaning. That's, that's kind of... Or or something else happens. Bonnie actually just go, you know, we do ne not necessarily the Vegapunk pirates thing, but Bonnie facilitates getting whoever survives this incident out and somewhere safe while the straw hats continue on their way. Uh, maybe that happens after we get to Elbaf. It really does feel like Bonnie is going to be fulfilling the law role, which has kind of been a, a, a default role for this entire post time skip age at this point kind of serving as that person who knows just a little bit more kind of gives us a connection to things going on without like 
really yeah, complicated story. Yeah, our character story. in other places. Yeah, like right. our Vivi over here, our Yamato over here. You know, characters who like just barely missed the the cutoff for right. joining allies. You know, good, yeah. good friends, allies, rivals. Your your Roger to Whitebeard kind of situation. I feel like she could slot really in, really good into that. But she also doesn't seem to have a crew anymore. She doesn't have a ship. She. I mean, we. She might be eight years old. Uh, you know, <laughs> at this point, thing. I can't even discount that. So, like, <laughs> see, honestly, though, that's the thing that makes me more and more sort of like convinced that she's not really eight, because like she's really competent for an eight year old, isn't she? Like, she doesn't act like a kid. She's not written as a kid, well, and it, we don't know how her powers work either. Which, like, this is a lot of people yeah, trying to she process doesn't her. Know. Well, yeah, it's it's. We don't know her devil fruit name. We don't know the scope of its powers. We've seen it do some extremely weird stuff in this arc. Yeah. So it could be anything from like when she ages herself up, she gains knowledge uh, and abilities. Um, the trauma of her past has done stuff to her. I mean. We, I mean, we could pick and choose all kinds of things. Most children in One Piece, if they are a named character, just have the world's worst childhood. So, uh, you know, I'm not going to get 100% discount the idea that she just learned how to do this stuff through her devil fruit. But is any of that going to, like, get her to join the crew? If we get another straw hat, it's Vivi finding the guy, finding the crew. And it's going to be ship. somebody who had a good childhood. Maybe Kizaru yeah. did. <laughs> Kizaru. We haven't seen Kizaru's childhood. I mean, I mean, I mean, minus the getting kicked out of their village. I think Sentamaru had it really good. You know, he was yeah, he, he got a, a job, job as a kid. Yeah, he was like an outcast, but yeah, he doesn't have like a you know an Uncle Ben moment. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, he kind of is the Uncle Ben now. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh. oh. All right. That's all I had uh, for uh, the recap. Uh, fun stuff, but yeah, again, tr- transition chapter. I don't even like calling it transition. It's it really is more of like a. Like, all right, the plot is moving. Let's enjoy the ride kind of chapter, which I, I love those. Um, but yeah, any uh, anything else uh, that we missed or anything, la- uh, any last, you know, finding findings? Oh, oh, you mentioned it. So I'm going to ask this really quick. What do you think an awakening looks like for Kizaru? I, I want to say that it has something to do with like nature and something that would be like a massive like impact to the weather and like because because what i i i think the biggest hint we have is for what happened to punk hazard um i think that those two characters i think kizaru not kizaru kuzan and um or aokiji i guess i should say and uh akainu i think their fight uh, they were awakened i want to say having the impact that they did because they fought for days and so i think it has something to do with like just like transforming the environment of wherever they are because that's the thing is like their powers could certainly like leave damage and like turn things to ice but like the weather patterns for that island just changed like that is wild quite honestly like to, to change the ecosystem of punk hazard where it's like permanently a half like winter half lava like that just isn't that has to be the an effect of their awakening. So I think for light, I don't really know exactly, but I think that it has to be something that is like, I think referencing what happens. Because um, because also, I was about to say like with the dawn and everything, it is kind of an interesting matchup, isn't it? Of like that's kind of the joy boy stick shtick, if you will, the romance dawn. You know, bringing the the sun and like he wears the straw hat and it's like all the metaphors there. Well, Kizaru is literally like a light character. So, like, what is the antithesis to that? If anything, I, I never expected Luffy and Kizaru to have, like, a, a really mainline fight. I always thought he was more of a match for, like, we'd see him go up against Blackbeard, for instance. And that would be poetic, wouldn't it? Could still happen. Um, or, you know, if there was a, a three-on-three with the admirals and everything, he would be the one that fights Sanji, you know. Or because he does have the sword, I guess uh, going up against Zora would make sense, too. Um, all that said, I don't know. <laughs> but <laughs> right, right, I, I literally have no idea but it does feel like it's coming yeah it's got to right uh, i'd be the first one and i think that uh what 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 did we learn about awakened mythical zoans right not that much either we know with luffy it's like he is literally taken on the form of a god so why couldn't it be kind of similar to logia i don't know yeah it's, it's one of those things like you know, looking at zones doesn't seem like much right out of the gate, but they are drastically different to paramecia types. Um, 
So like, I don't even think Luffy's is a good barometer because the whole point yeah. of it is that it's kind of a unique situation. But you think about, um, you know, Rob Lucci's, you know, awakening versus like Doflamingo's awakening. They are drastically different things. But they do have one core principle, right? The core principle is that it affects the world around them. And in so even though Luffy's way, an right? awakened Zoan, he does have that ability of like his devil fruit is affecting the environment. It's ma- he can make the ground rubber. Um, and then so that's, that's mythical Zoan. And then Doflamingo is like he's able to, you know, do the birdcage and you know make other things string. So with Kizaru making other things light, you know, that, that's the thing. It's like it's, an, it's a matter of like imposing your will on objects, on the world around you. And that's where the battle comes in. If he makes everything light, what happens? Yeah, it's it. I mean, I'm sure Oda's got something in mind, but I, I sure do not. <laughs> I I gotta wonder. Yeah, um, and it, it, it it's a surprising thing, right, to see him be the one, um, like Kizaru be the first Logia potentially. We don't know um, for us to really see that. I was kind of wondering if we'd see it with Kuzan first, but uh, no, nah, we didn't. We didn't get to that point with it. So. Who knows? That, that we know of. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, are we ready to do uh, an anime check-in? Sure. All right. Um, I know you want to talk about Jujutsu Kaisen. I do. Makes sense. Um, it's the big thing. Everybody's talking about it. While I'm over here in my corner with Mishoku Tensei, the, the end of Core 1 of Season 2, having a great time, loving every minute of it, great finale. Um, what's going on with Jujutsu Kaisen? Because I heard it, Jujutsu Kaisen broke the internet. So, um, so for mostly, reference, I'm only I've only watched the first few episodes of season two. So, so and it's because you've watched the only the first few episodes of season two that I want to bring this up because, uh, uh, you, you know, this is a, this is a big it gets good later kind of kind of thing. But Let's wait till the 500th episode, John. But when we, John. But when, we uh, when we talked about it before, and you were like, "What you know? Why do I care about this? Why does this matter to me?" The last episode of Jujutsu Kaisen is the answer to that question. 100 percent it is it is the this is why any of this works and all the hell that breaks loose after the fact is because this exact sequence of of events happened so i know (laughs) i know that like the um the flashback arc is a little bit rough but it was uh it was a necessary thing um but otherwise Oh my goodness, the second core has been really, really good. It, I think it was a good choice to just do these back to back and just dive right in. We got an entire um, tribute episode to um, Gynax and Trigger, uh, just just completely one hundred percent dedicated to their nonsense. There's a there's a shot for shot recreation of a Gurren Lagann scene in it. Um, they they really picked up and run with some of the references that the manga borrows, uh, and they do an exceptional job. Uh, and the actual kick, you know, beginnings of the Shibuya incident. Uh, it's it's doing a pretty solid job reintroducing the main cast. Kind of like, why do we care about these guys? You know, what matters? It's been a couple of years now, um, and it's got a lot of heavy lifting to do. But they're doing a really, really solid job with it. And uh, yeah, people are going to be miserable by the time this is over, but not because it's bad. Just to clarify, are you a manga and anime person for Jujutsu Kaisen? I, I am a manga person, and I so really... I thought you had said yeah, that, yeah. Yeah, I really, really... So I know what's coming, and even me knowing what's coming, it is it is pretty rough. Um, this is this is, this is is uh, Jujutsu Kaisen's equivalent of Marineford in a lot of ways. Um, wild to which, hear. Yeah, which sounds really wild because it's not even that, you know, long into the series, but yeah, that's kind of the point. Um... But I'm happy to see, say, by the way, though, that like Jujutsu Kaisen is kind of retaking, you know, the Internet a little bit just in just in the sense that like I know Zom 102 has been also uh, kind of sweeping. But I, I don't know. I I just think that it, of all the shonen, it's it's actually like a really good shonen, even if I have my own hang ups. And so I'm glad that like it's not just a Demon Slayer world that we're in right now. Jujutsu Kaisen remains one of the most fascinating shonen manga I've read in a really long time. Um, it's not as transgressive as like Chainsaw Man is, where it's almost an anti shonen manga at places. Uh, mm-hmm. Chainsaw Man's in some really weird spots in the manga right now. But it, there's very clearly a lot of stuff that Gege Akutami is thinking about and analyzing. Um, I, I recently been comparing the current manga state to a literal JoJo's Bizarre Adventure commentary, like 
oh, you, you know, hey, I'm, I'm going to make fun of Jojo for a minute, even though it's like a serious part of the story. Yeah. It, it's kind of bizarre. Um, and I don't want to spoil too much, but I will say that Akutami is a stone cold, heartless monster for timing certain events in the manga to two airings of episodes in the anime. Like he knew exactly where everything was going to go. My guy literally went on a break um last week to like set a certain thing up just so at times with this last episode uh just to really make it hurt for people and uh it, it takes a certain level of like malicious planning to do that and it i kind of respect it yeah i i can i can understand that and look i'm gonna get to it I, it's good I, it's good it's i have some time before i have a few days before free in season one is coming out I'm so excited. Travis, when I tell you that manga means so much to me, uh, like it's such a good fantasy. I'm, manga. I'm really and excited. Uh, it, the fall season looks really promising. Altogether, yeah, I, but I'm, I'm really excited to see your takes on that. I was curious, too, because I was thinking of finishing season two of Rise of the Shield Hero, which I gave up on like a lot of people did uh, not too long after the tortoise incident. Um I, I like I dropped it and then I went back. I powered through it and then I dropped it again, kind of when it was getting a little bit better. Uh, so that it's coming back again, and I'm I'm kind of wondering if it's going to scratch that Iskai itch that constantly needs to be scratched for me. But um, I've been enjoying, honestly. Am I actually the strongest? I, which is a bad Isekai. Like there's, it's like l- legitimately like to the details of it. It's badly written. It's a bad setup. I really like it for some reason. Like, it, not even that, like, in the ironic, like, it's trash. Like, yeah, yeah, it's trash. But, like, I should, there's something just kind of satisfying. How much do you know about them actually the strongest? Yeah, what you've told me. Okay, I forget what I've told you. <laughs> but, um... You, you've, hit, you've hit me with the setup. Yeah, where he's just, like, barrier magic can... Yeah, I think I mentioned that he uses mm, yeah. barriers to facilitate an internet connection to the to his... To Japan, and right? Then he so turns his little sister, sister into a yeah, sister could watch anime, right? Yeah, and um, but it's, it's I don't know, it's just kind of doing that comfort slice of life isekai thing that I want because like it's been a little bit of a dead zone for really nice slice of life romance, unless you are into the Hori Mia season two thing, which much to a lot of people's chagrin, I just haven't had the let's call it courage to watch the missing pieces, just because my brain does not like to organize anime and manga content that way uh, but I, I did want to bring up boruto uh because i did catch up i've referenced this i think once or twice and so so i did i finally read it and you know i have you and i have had plenty of offline conversations about this and for real there was that poll that came out where somebody basically it was called out that boruto is more popular than naruto now um the character is more popular because why do you think it's the anime has been kicking for like what six years? It's a long, been a while now, yeah. Time has di- like moves differently to you and me, but like Naruto, like peak Naruto was like 2005 to 2011. That was six years, right? 2011 is around the time where I think like we were past pain and all that stuff going on, and like so Naruto was starting to drop off a little bit. It didn't end the manga until 2014, right? So, oh yeah, yeah. It's just it's just during a lot of that peak time around 2008, it started doing the war arc, and that would go on to comprise a, a whole like fourth of the series. It was insane. Yeah, the fourth, the fourth Shinobi War, fourth of the series, um, which I I have my criticisms, my severe criticisms. We'll, we'll do how. the Naruto trauma eventually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we might do a Boruto thing first, just because it's a little bit more pressing. Um, cause two blue vortex, uh, just happened. So this is the, the Boruto Shippuden basically where we have a time skip and I messaged you where I was, cause chapter two just came out. It's a monthly series. Thank God. Um, I can't imagine doing week to week with a Naruto property again. Like I'm just not in that place. I'm not in my twenties anymore, but I, I messaged you and I, I kind of think I actually like the character of Boruto now. That poll kind of makes sense to me <laughs> at the last minute. And can I just say, I know you also read chapter two. I compare chapter two of here and the way that Boruto kind of presents himself, A, way better than how Shippuden handled it. Way better. 
I think like Shippuden kind of like messed it up, quite honestly. Like it like Naruto's kind of like re-entry into Konoha and even down to his character design, I thought was weak as hell. But Boruto, my boy, coming into Konoha, sweeping in, he has the Riz of Naruto Sage Mode. And maybe a little then some. And that's a big moment. I haven't felt this sort of jazzed up about like a Naruto thing since Pain, since Sage Mode, and that whole thing. I think after that, Naruto just kind of glides through its mediocrity. And Boruto was less than mediocre in a lot of respects for me. But I think the last 10 or 15 chapters, you know, from the end of Boruto up until two blue vortex i'm like here we go i'm actually i'm in travis and you i think i think your response to me was are you okay he um, my actual response and i'm not letting this go because it's such a good pun uh he hits you with the oh, risen gun yes yes that was that was a good pun yes um porto's cool now that, there's no other way to say it he's cool i'm in i want to see what he does he kind of, he kind of he comes in with a and and I think this is a part of uh I mean God we're gonna I can't he has talk too much about main character this, energy spoiled. finally he has he has grown main character energy which is interesting he talks like Kakashi is what he talks like you get it and that's the only look, look. that's the only and I'm trying to say this in a way that doesn't spoil it for people because yes. I do want to try to be respectful of that this is you know it's only chapter two but it is a time skip so there's a bunch of stuff before this but that's how I would describe it he talks like Kakashi but you you kind of touched on the other aspect of it Borto's an annoying character in the first part of the series but it's not his fault it's the story's fault the story treats him like a a guy who wants to be the protagonist, but he can't. And he's just sort of like, he kind of accepts it over time of just like, all right, I'm not going to be my dad. But he's a little story, snot is what he is for a decent amount of time. Say again? He's a little snot is what he is. For he is. A, like, a he, he's a bit of a, he, yeah, he, he's, a, he's a little bratty, you know? Like the whole thing with the vase. Like, bro, chill. Like it was, it was an accident. Like calm down. Himawari is just, even Himawari is just like, dude, Boruto, like, can you like, be cool like like it's it's a vase bro like it's fine and kawaki's just like oh i gotta fix this vase or boruto it's like they're a married couple and like they're just, like boruto is just sort of like well you know you you, you didn't do what i what i wanted you to do you know it's a little bit like it, you know that a, kind of bratty yeah it's a thing where like the the series picks up with uh uh with with, with them in like peace right like yeah. so you you there's a, there's a case to be made there that because he didn't have to struggle and i think the the manga itself makes this argument because he didn't have to struggle from the jump um it kind of created the situation where yeah he does immediately be threatened by the first cool kid in the room at all times and he does have a complex about like dad's attention and stuff. And the first part of the manga does spend an exorbitant amount of time uh, doing that. And then it's only supplanted by the stupid space nonsense uh, yeah. that, that ended the original series. And this seems dedicated to trying to redeem. Um, so it's a, yeah. it's, it's a rough read. I, I, I can't even tell you why I've been reading it this whole time beyond but like I think it's someone's getting, gonna ask me i think it's on the right track now just because i think it has kind of i think they figured out the character of boruto at this point like what would make him work and it's not this sort of like you know welcome to the black parade kind of thing between him and naruto it's more sort of about like the the character who goes through the trauma sort of in real time and like the thing that he's going through now is a unique shonen situation. And it's one that's just like, it's devastating based on sort of the way that it starts in peacetime. Cause it like, let's be real. It started off as more of like, let's aim this at the next generation, literally called Boruto next generations, but it's double-sided. It also means that they, they were aiming for like, not the Naruto fans, but their kids. 
you know, or like the next group of like young, like preteens kind of coming into this anime. It's, it's styled that way. It has like a lower style in terms of like, like we're just going to follow Boruto going on Shinobi adventures. He goes to the Academy. Like there's a reason that the anime doesn't even get to the manga until like what episode a hundred something like mm-hmm. the first, like hundred or so episodes is just like up like before he even becomes a genie and like the it's a clear eye setup and an idea that i think is fine for what it is if anything i think the the first part of the anime it's much better than when they do get to the manga stuff 100 i've said that many times just de- them being little kids in ninja school yeah. and dealing with that stakes are significantly low. better Boruto is, he's not as insufferable as a character. A lot of it is about him and Sarada and Mitsuki becoming friends and like figuring out their weaknesses. You get way more stuff with Tsurume, who is kind of an interesting character. And like, she doesn't get her due until like way further into to Boruto, the, the manga. But anyway, it still has its issues like the villains. But I do think that like Boruto himself, I'm pretty happy with what, where, where he's at. Like just just the, the the setup for him because like now he's like earned that right like he is the protagonist. I actually don't just feel like somebody else is going to swoop in and save the day, which was something that Naruto dealt with a lot quicker and more efficiently in terms of like Naruto could not just rely on Kakashi to come in and save him. You know, Tsunade same deal. Third Okage, we don't have to get into that. Um, part of my Naruto trauma. Don't worry. Uh, no, I. Do you at least agree that Boruto's new design looks cool? I think all the designs are bussin', especially Sarada's. It's it's kind of funny because uh, Kishimoto was always accused of like redesigning those those um, costumes for Shippuden because they were just so much to draw. Um, just and in now general. it's like, <laughs> and now we've looped all the way back around to doing that doing the opposite of that where it's just this very you know complicated in depth um you know there's like boruto's design here despite it being a lot of black a lot of red um you know solid colors like you know they let wind pass through and you could see kind of like the jewelry he's wearing and and the belt that he's wearing and the belt is studded it has you know details to it um Try going monthly was the right call, really. I think so. Yeah. Um, Serata, of course, got a huge redesign as well. That one's been a little bit controversial. Um, Why? I because people. How do I put this? Because people are really, and I think this is just because of the internet being what it is right now. People are really looking for um, weirdos these days. They're they're constantly like hyper attuned to like anything where like an underage character might be sexualized and i don't even think that that's what's happening here i I, there's no there's no shots in this manga that would suggest to me that there's anything untoward happening um it's the you know it's it's the people thought uh weird things about um uh stuff in one piece a little while ago the same thing like and oda had to go no that you guys are weird why are you being weird about this i think it's the same thing um but yeah i i, I think she, you know she's kind of she's kind of dressed like a delinquent now is what yeah. it seems like to me she is one. Uh, big, that's how she's expressing herself because yeah. she yeah not to give anything away but she is like a character who's kind of caught in between two very severe opposing forces and she has to thread that needle needle very carefully but again, you, you touched on it, but like, I think I know what it is. You know what I like about the new Boruto design? Kind of looks like a pirate. <laughs> I think that's why he I can, like it so he much. He does kind of look like a pirate. He, he does. Like, they, they, they all they all have they all look like Oda designs. Like, there's a lot of things their clothes are telling about them. Right, and like, I think that like Sarda too. I think like they look more like Shinobi to me. Um, they look a little bit more of like what I wish the world of Naruto had like maintained, it really moved into this sort of like high tech kind of thing. I never liked the scientific ninja tool stuff. To me, it was just like, it's a world breaking thing that I, doesn't make sense. Man, really. Man, I never even liked the Kaiju fights. Uh, you know, the, I liked them because they were sparing got, enough and they, it, they, they were sparing enough, but like we reached a point with like jutsu and stuff where it stopped being, you know, it really you think about like the classic fights with like Zabusa um, or the Genin exams 
you know, or the shooting example, I should say, like, mm-hmm. and, and when they were introducing all these characters and they all had to find very distinct ways to leverage their unique skill. It's very, you know, it, it's very Jujutsu Kaisen, right? Where it was kind of this push and pull between two very specialized fields. And like they had gaps in those fields that had to be exploited. Um, and it made for this really big tension. And then by the end of it, it was Dragon Ball. Yeah, because every I mean, I mean, that's kind of like going back, bringing this all back around to our original talk here at the top of this. That's kind of what makes Gear Fifth so refreshing is it's taken that kind of like big power scaling struggle and just absolutely reset the board, just turned it upside down. I could go further on, but uh, I guess we I guess it sounds like we really do got to do a Boruto thing because uh, uh, I have way unless more. unless the discord stops us at this point. I think we're going to end up doing it. Hey, so far, nobody has voiced severe concerns. So uh, but we'll see. We'll see. Um, all right. Was there I, I, I'm good for the now. Um, we kind of went over. It, so I guess we can oh, end it. Yeah, we got we got to do this. All right, but thanks so much for listening, and uh, yeah, we'll be back. We'll we'll if we don't do Boruto, I don't know what else we'll do. Um, it, there's other stuff we could certainly get into, but uh, as always, we want to hear from people in the Discord, and uh, you can always email us too. Dang it, what's the email again? It's something in Bond uh, Pirates. I uh, yeah, so it's, it's uh, Boruto. Yeah, no, it's okay. It's your first time finding out the email was a thing. It's rookiepirateradio yeah. at gmail dot com. Clutch. Um, we'll see you all on the next, and uh, yeah. We'll maybe talk about Boruto. Bye, everybody.